Give me an F! What does F stand for? Fuck my life! Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Live Reviews with the only fucker on the internet lonely enough to do this. <laughs> Maybe one day my prince will come. Anyways, today on My Lonely Life, we're going to be reviewing another shitty-ass story. And not only a shitty story, but another really, really fucking disgusting one. So if you've got a weak stomach, this is your disclaimer. Get the fuck out of here right now. There's the door. You see it? Get the fuck out. Okay? Because, 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 you, you, yeah, get out. Okay, so today, we... <laughs> Today, we will be reviewing the story, Dating Game. Are you done? Okay. So like I said, today we will be reviewing the story, Dating Game. If you're wondering why my hair looks like I just got out of the shower, technically I didn't. It's just gel. Do I look like a douchebag? On to the story. So, we'll just be, uh... There we go. There's that shitty-ass fucking website we love so much. Alrighty. Once again, I cannot stress this enough, all joking aside. If you have a weak stomach, or if you have aversions to child violence, leave now. Do not blame me if your weak ass, pussy ass, bitch ass comes talking to me at the end of this video. I won't hear it. Okay. Dating game. I had been single for a while. You don't say. And I was sick and tired of it. Being 32 and single is no laughing, no laughing matter. Guys, it's, guys, it's no laughing matter. Stop laughing. The traumatic experiences of watching your friends get married, have children, and attain the American dream are akin to the hopeless depression of the schizophrenic mental patient. Ooh, so we're already equating this to mental illness, are we? We're going down that way real fast. That train is going straight into the fucking ground. I wanted a wife. I wanted kids. I wanted a chair that didn't fucking squeak every time I fu It's okay, I'll be getting a new one next week. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> No, you know what? Actually, fuck that. We're gonna take a moment to... Do you wanna see what I have to fucking sit on every fucking time I do a video? This bitch. This bitch. My bony ass sits on this bitch. Just thought I'd uh, take a few moments to uh, show you and, uh, you know, make you feel bad for me. Did it work? Please tell me it worked. Please. Give me money. Please give me something. Please. Adoration. Love. Attention. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. I was gonna just I was gonna just keep reading off and just have it be normal, but god damn it, I just can't even fucking do it. I can't do that with a straight face after what I don't even know what the fuck I just did. Someone needs to take away my online privileges. I wanted a steady job. I was tired of working at Burger King and living alone in a studio apartment. And I was almost certain I memorized 90% of porn stars on the internet by name. Did you memorize me? <laughs> I, I had to throw that in there, I'm sorry. Disgusted by the company of my left hand. I mean... I would never be disgusted by him. <laughs> 
I decided to go out to one of those speed dating events. I picked out my best garb and walked out the door. Keep in mind, I worked at Burger King. So the best clothes I could afford were some mediocre dress shirts and tattered khaki pants I bought at Walmart during a clearance event? Bitch. I worked at a fucking chicken restaurant. And I got some bougie ass shit in my closet if I want to go out. Like, I don't have like designer shit, but I've got some nice ass shit. And I have a suit if I need it. Like, who are you fooling? I don't know about, I don't know about this motherfucker, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe not everybody don't. Mm -hmm. I walked into the event trying to display the shred of confidence I had left. I'm surprised you even had a shred. I was instantly discouraged when I saw all the other competing males in their Armani suits. <laughs> High class whiskey in hand and auras reeking of nothing but pure self esteem and cons. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> and conceit. The ladies there were dressed in fine dresses, some of them quite low cut, and smelled like a flower garden. Ah. Ah, I see where we're going, and I want nothing to do with this. No, 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 no pedophilia for me. No, 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 no. I mean, do I need to say it, or? Okay, like, no, no, like, all joking aside, what the fuck? You're smelling them? Like, I, I get what it's supposed to mean. I get it. I get it. But why? Okay. Let's keep going. There were some serious lookers in there, and I swear my pants shrunk a couple sizes. It got my motherfucker. The speed dating started. The first girl I sat down with was quite young. A 22-year-old. Hey, I'm 22. Mother of three? Oh, God. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want kids and I want a husband, but... I don't want three kids right now. Three? We're going with that. <laughs> she had made a lot of mistakes in her... By the way... I had a comment in my last video, my last announcement video, about me making some weird sounds <laughs> whenever I was, uh, 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 I had just taken a dab, and, uh, so, uh, I was coughing from that, and <laughs> so someone was like, why would you make such disgusting noises on camera? And my answer to that is clearly you haven't seen what I do for a living. <laughs> she had made a lot of mistakes in her life and seemed far more than I could handle. Right off the bat, she told me about how she was four days sober from methamphetamine and was looking to settle down with a nice man who didn't look like a walrus. I have many questions, and I don't think I want any of them answered. I spent the next four minutes making general small talk, quite literally fearing for my life. Yeah, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give him that one. I, you know what? Uh, okay. What did God... Fuck me that one of these stories actually give me something to work with, but I'll give him that one. Once the buzzer sounded, I rocketed out of my chair with the speed of a gazelle. Uh, you know what? I'll get... you have you 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 have two gold stars at this point. Story. <clears throat> Let's see how long it takes you for them to be completely revoked and forgotten.
The young woman seemed offended, but honestly, what did she expect? I'll give him that one. The next woman was way too old for me. I had thought that these events were age-regulated and had different meetings for people in different stages of life. I'm no pervert. What did he say a few lines? But the whole idea of taking her shirt off and seeing two runny eggs nailed to the wall did not appease me. Again, what did he say to you? My decision was finalized as soon as she brought up her grandkids. I can hardly handle one generation of young ones, much less two. You and me both, buddy. At least right now. I actually asked her if she needed help getting out of her chair after the buzzer sounded. Oh, dick move. Again, another dark look. I'm surprised she didn't dick slap you. And by dick slap, I don't mean her slapping you with her dick. I mean her taking your dick off of you and then slapping you with it. <laughs> I was batting zero for two, but such pitches were ones I would gladly let the catcher have. The next woman seemed much more appealing. She was 26 and studying to be a nurse in a lo at a local hospital. She loved kids but had none of her own, which was relief. She seemed well kept and stable and wasn't a bad looker either. No lie, my eyes wandered a bit south a couple of times during the meeting. She didn't, er, she either didn't notice or didn't care as she never pointed it out. I asked her if she'd like my number as the session ended and she consented. I flipped open my phone and entered her number as she read it out. Now, I'm going to point something out at this point. This lady, right here, never, never, never comes back in the story. I'd like to point out that the writer did give his number to the lady. So, if he wasn't a total fucking creep during the date, one would be led to believe that she would call him back at some point in the future. Bypassing the entire point of this entire story, you know, the, the, everything, everything that happens for the next 20 minutes of this story. Well, in reality, it's 20 minutes. We all know how long it's going to be by the time I'm done with this bullshit. However long it's going to be. We all... If you know this story, you know how this ends. Mm? Mm. 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 All right. I flipped open my phone and entered her number as she read it out, smiling at her and thanking her for her listening ear. No wonder I had been single for so long. I got up to the next table. You got up? to the next table? You got up to go to the next table? You left for the next table? That's not... I got up to the next table. Okay, that just doesn't sound very right. While doing so, I closed my phone by accident and realized I had never saved her number. So it was lost forever. For the love of... O oh, for 3. The next table was empty. What a joke. Like the story. If I wanted to sit and stare at a wall, I would have stayed home. Nothing really to say here. Moving on. This is where the story begins getting dark. Now, might I stop to point out, if you have to start telling people what to expect from your story, I'm automatically, you know, I'm automatically going to assume that it is not that thing, and in fact it's the opposite. So when you tell me that your story is getting dark, I say your story is getting gory. That's what I interpret that as. Let's see if my interpretation is correct. The woman I met at the next table was the most interesting of all, but not in a bad way. She had long, flowing, dark hair and green eyes. She had this cute smile, and man, what a tight body on this one. I thought you weren't a pervert. Black dress, black shoes, black everything. Black dress with the tights underneath? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I had to throw in a little reference there because it kind of made reminded me of something. Uh, but it also reminded me to, you know, so, she, so what you're saying is that she has all black everything. <laughs> I'll see myself out. 
For someone dressed in such a gothic manner, she had such a bubbly personality. Everything I said made her giggle. Well, that's not a red flag at all. You are clearly somebody that some amazing woman would laugh at. Just, you know, that's definitely, you are coming off as the most charming Mm, if you were in front of me personally as a gay man, I would fuck you because you just mm, you just you sound like you're just oozing masculinity right now. And I felt like a king just talking to this girl once again. No red flags. She was 27 and currently unemployed once again. No red flags. She was married to a husband before, but he had, he had left her after their two children died of leukemia. She told me that the cancer was entwined with her lineage, dating back as far as the 18th century. But you don't have it? That's... One sec. Mm. I guess I stand a little bit corrected, but not totally corrected. Okay, so it's estimated that between 3 and 10 in every 100 cancers are associated with an inherited faulty gene. Cancers caused by inherited faulty genes are much less common than those caused by other factors, such as aging, smoking, being overweight, and not exercising regularly or not eating a healthy, balanced diet. The chances of hereditary cancer are 5 to 10% of cancers, and these cases are thought in these cases, an individual inherits a copy of a growth control gene with a mutation from one parent and a working copy of the same gene from the other parent. So what that basically means is that that is impossible for it to do that much and for her to not have it if it's that rampant. Um, that means that there is such a small percentage of that actually being true that it is just not possible. I'm sorry. Um, I was right to call bullshit. I was just not right to call it completely bullshit. It's not completely bullshit, but this is mostly bullshit. Okay. So. Now that that's out of the way... Therefore, in numerous fits of emotional rage, her ex-husband blamed her for giving the children cancer and left. Too pained by the loss of her entire family, she moved to the city a few weeks ago and was living on unemployment, unable to continue working at her job due to the crippling depression and panic she suffered as a result of her abandonment. Hmm. But she's at a speed dating event. Once again. No crimson fucking blood covered. I don't even know what else. This, this, this red, red, so much red. So much red, so much red. Oh my god, it's so red. I, it's like Squidward suicide. It's so red. So much. There's so much red. It's like Sonic.exe up in here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did just reference two of my old reviews. Uh, <laughs> description in the below. Can I use you? Can't, can't even fucking link in the description below. <laughs> Who am I lying? I'm too... Then, bleh, bleh. Once again, I refer back to my earlier statement, somebody needs to take away my online privileges. Despite the torment in her life, she never seemed depressed about it.
Unable to continue working at her job due to the crippling depression and panic she suffered as a result of her abandonment. Despite the torment in her life, she never seemed depressed about it. Did I just have a stroke? Did I? Oh. Sorry about that. That was an important call. Anyways. So yeah, we really just fucking did that. Okay. Either she was incredibly optimistic about life, or she was one of the best actors I'd ever seen. <laughs> Either way, I was willing to take a shot. I asked her if she'd like my number. It turned out that she'd had some bad meetings at this particular convention herself and wanted to take off to do something more... Fun. She tossed me an invite and, seeing as I was a lonely 32-year-old man, she didn't have to ask twice. I never understood what she saw in me over all the other guys. I was beaten and broken with no aspirations to better my current situation. Maybe she understood how I felt, considering all the pain she felt herself and decided to get to know who I really was under this cocoon of emotionless insecurity. I sensed a thread of compassion intertwined between all that stress and trauma, willing to lead... Leading... Willing to lend an ear to anyone that felt the same pain as her. I was truly transfixed by her presence, drawn to her character. I had never felt like this before. We decided to go to a pool hall. Apparently, she used to be a regular at another pool hall by her old house, winning local tournaments and making a name for herself, and she wanted to check out the scenery here. I wasn't too shabby at the table game myself, so I was excited. Every shot she made was perfect. The balls just sank into the pockets like each pocket was a black hole just waiting for something to trespass into its field. I hate when writers try and do something that's just kind of needlessly pretentious just to kind of sound like they're very smart, like they are making something that's uh, very mundane into something that doesn't need to for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Um, if this had any kind of reason as to why it was being needlessly detailed, then that would actually be a different kind of thing. Uh, if I go detail something in my story to that kind of uh, degree, then it obviously has some kind of bearing on the story later on. But this does not, so therefore this is impossible for that to be the case. And it is just useless drivel to extend the length of an already shitty story. On we go. <sighs> Out of the 17 games we played, I think I made around 23 shots. She just kept running the table. It was funny because she kept apologizing for being so good. I waved the apology and complimented her on her skill, causing her to giggle causing her to giggle more. I don't know why, but I've always had a trouble saying that word, giggle. It's just a weird name. It's a weird word for me. Every time she... Oh, I thought that was a T. Every time she laughed, I fell harder and harder. And, to be honest, I was always excited when the cue ball landed on my side of the table. You know. Because she bent over to take her shots, as many pros do. Um. I don't, I don't know if you can see that, um. Let me adjust the focus real quick. Yeah, okay, so there you go. As many pros do. Hey. Um. Hmm. So, um, 
I'm going to refer back to uh, earlier. Still not a pervert? We left after that. She said she had to get home as she had some errands to run, being new in the neighborhood and all. I agreed since I had a Facebook application that I had to update. Obviously, I didn't give her that reason. Jesus, what the hell is wrong with me? You know, I was just asking myself the same question. <laughs> mm. Passing up an amazing girl for Facebook? Egg. Egg? What does that mean? So we exchanged numbers and parted ways. I couldn't believe it. I had actually scored a beautiful woman. Hell yeah. Weeks and months passed on. Oh, weeks and months. Both. Oh. Couldn't have just said months. Why? I'm gonna close this door so that I don't wake up my fucking neighbors. Huh. <sighs> Where the fuck did I go? Not just in the story, just in my life. Somebody help me. <laughs> we continued to talk and eventually began regularly dating. The relationship moved pretty quickly and it seemed we were truly matched for each other. After about seven months of dating, I asked her to marry me. I popped the question on the 17th as that's how many games we played on our first date. I thought you might have forgotten that uh, about the paragraph we've had in between now and then oh, that's that callback though <sniffs> chef's kiss she found that so romantic and flew into my arms screaming yes to the skies things were finally looking up i moved out of my shitbox apartment and into her home I always admired the cozy feel of her two-bedroom ranch house. Something perfect to start a family in. As I was moving my final things in, I noticed how much of a mess I was making with my boxes of stuff and all. Oh, I, I didn't know what it could be with. I thought maybe you had grabbed a horse from a nearby farm and brought them inside, and they were currently literally shitting everywhere. I didn't think that uh, in your process of moving that... Uh, that uh, that uh, the the mess would be created um, 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 uh, by your things. I thought uh, there was no way that uh, there could be a mess unless, of course, there was an animal that uh, created uh, 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 said um, um, mess. So yeah. I apologized and motioned to the basement to finish moving my things. Her face instantly darted to mine. In a hurried and almost frantic voice, she assured me she'd take care of the rest of my things and I would relax. It was a bit odd, sure, but she had been... Ugh. Tired as I am right now at 12.28 a.m.? Hmm. Uh, she'd been through so much excruciating sadness throughout her life that her having a psychiatric illness okay hold on oh, hold on no no oh She'd been through so much excruciating sadness throughout her life that her having a psychiatric illness is something I expected. I complied with her request. That has to be the single most creepy, ungodly, 
terrifying sentence I think my eyes have ever read. I need a moment. I I need I need time. I I need help. You know, I'm still thinking about it. All right, this story is not going to finish itself. Whatever. <laughs> the next few months were great. We never got tired of each other, and on our wedding day, the kiss we shared on that altar was so special that I firmly believed angels surrounded us and serenaded us with harps and trumpets as our lips connected and sparked so brightly that the entire room was illuminated. Again, with this very needless description of a very mundane event. Oh, it's a wedding. I don't care if it's a wedding. I don't care if it's the fucking Pope. It's, um, no. No, no. You don't be that descriptive of something so stupid. Probably just pissed off a bunch of Catholics. Ask me how much I care. I'll leave out the details of the honeymoon as this is not a pornographic piece. You could have fooled me. She was always leery of me approaching the foreboding basement. The foreboding basement. Sometimes to the point of arguing with me about it, but aside from that, I didn't see any fault in her. Until everything I knew about life was shot. It's shit like this that just makes me laugh. Like, it makes me laugh on the inside, not externally, because it's not as, as funny on the outside as it just makes me sad. Very sad. Um, there's, there's a hole in my heart where love used to be because Everything I knew about life shattered. <laughs> One day, she told me she was going to the grocery store. I noted that I wanted some ground beef in order to make hamburgers for dinner. She smiled at me with that cute, adorable smile I had grown to know and love and headed out. After climbing Burger King's corporate ladder, I had finally attained the position of regional financial manager for the entire state. God damn it, fucking yuck! It was a long and arduous process, but I was getting just above six figures for... God damn it, I fucking hate when I fuck up this goddamn shit! I was working on some budget information assessing the costs of all the franchises across the state. It was a long and arduous process, but I was getting just above six figures for it, so I wasn't complaining. After each report was fully completed and evaluated, I moved the files to a USB drive so I could upload them to a computer for a corporate meeting the next day. To my horror, with only three reports left to finish, the computer crashed. If I didn't finish these reports, I would surely lose my job. That's a little extreme. I called my wife, asking her if she had another computer or something I could use, but she didn't answer. I rummaged through the house to find something to finish these reports with to no avail. Desperate times called for desperate measures, so I took the daring risk of approaching the basement. Guess my cat's not in here. The handle was or unusually cold, and the door was locked. Frustrated and defeated, I slumped to the couch in depression. That is, until I realized that there was a specific flower pot that my wife always guarded with her life. Oh, isn't that so convenient? On a hunch, I went to it and found the key at the bottom of the pot under the dirt. 
As soon as I opened the door, a rancid and tangible odor attacked me like a falling wall from a decrepit building. Huh? Okay, I'm not exactly an expert on the matter. And I don't think that there would be any experts on this kind of matter, but, um... Once again. Odor like a falling wall from a decrepit building. I don't wager that um, I know what that smells like. Don't wager that very many people would know what that smells like, but I would very much hope that a Burger King worker does not know what that smells like. The entire basement looked as if it was wasting away, a clear contrast to the rest of the house. The heavy layers of dust upon every surface suggested the basement hadn't been accessed in years. That will make no sense in just a few moments. Using my cell phone as a flashlight, I guided myself down the stairs and flicked the light switch. Surprisingly, the bulb still worked. The walls looked molded. The wood was breaking down. And the stench was putrid. And yet this is the first time that you, after living there for seven months, are discovering this. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, gosh. And the entire place was in disarray. I encountered a strong sense of dysphoria after setting foot in the room, so I quickly searched for some old computer with the intent of running upstairs as quickly as possible. Nothing wrong with this room at all, with these moldy-ass walls and this uh, breaking-down uh, house. You know, there's nothing wrong with this at all. This is a perfectly normal thing. Uh, I refer to the picture I used for the thumbnail of Sonic.exe. Uh, this is fine. The uh, Sonic sitting in the middle of the fiery room with the chili dog. <laughs> Oh, and to respond to the other person uh, that asked me why I would ever make such disgusting noises on my channel, um, clearly you haven't been here for very long. This is kind of what I do. Alrighty. To my luck and astonishment, there was an old laptop and charger in the corner. Oh. And I'm led to believe that there is electricity in this basement. Why? Oddly enough, one of the boxes was one that she had brought down after I had first moved in. I had not seen some of this stuff in a long time. How long have you been here? Ignoring the nostalgia, I seized the computer and charger and raced up to the master bedroom. After giving the laptop a few minutes of power, I booted it up. It ran on in Windows... It ran on Windows XP, and it was quite the technological dinosaur compared to modern equipment. But it had Microsoft... Ah. But it had Microsoft Office, as so... God damn it. But it had Microsoft Office, so it was acceptable. Unlike my fucking narration skills. As soon as Windows finished booting up, a system message appeared on the screen notifying me that new... <laughs> that new sources had been added to the tagged video cache, and if I'd like to check it, I had never seen it. <laughs> if I could just apologize in advance for anybody that watches this video, it is 12.40 in the morning. I am on three hours of sleep. God, I'm going to sleep good tonight. So, yeah. Thank you for 
being ever so patient with this happy little idiot. Okay. I had never seen a system message like this before. I know that snooping is generally taboo, but curiosity overcame me. I don't think very many things would be taboo for this kind of person. I was taken to a hidden file that required a password to access it. Rolling my eyes, I moved my cursor to X out of the program when suddenly something typed the password in for me. You don't want to try that one again? I'll give you another chance. Like, do you, you don't want to try that one again? You really going with that? Jesus Christ. How fucking brain dead do you have to be to write this kind of shit? Like, let's cut the bullshit. How fucking brain dead do you have to be for this kind of bullshit to be scary to you, to be enjoyable to you? What the fuck are you people smoking? Give me some, and you're fired from life. Kindly pack up your desk and exit life. I don't care where, you, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay in this dimension. Something typed the password in for me. A bit frightened at this point, I was sucked into the screen. Oh no! I'm starting to think that that is legitimately a fever dream that I'm having right now out of my lack of sleep. Um, apparently, we've entered Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. I don't know what they were trying to say there, but that's not right at all. <laughs> I just don't even know what the fuck to say to that. Like, I'm a bit frightened at this point. I'm I'm a bit frightened at this point. I was sucked into the screen. Flawless. Somebody give this man a Newberry prize. I think that's what it's called. I don't fucking remember. There were four videos entitled him.avi. Oh, that, that brings me back. That's the first video on my channel. It's Jeff the Killer Story. Please don't go watch it. 1.avi, 2.avi, and y.avi. All four thumbnails were pure black. Curious, I clicked on the file entitled him.avi. I should have never done that. The video was shaky and grainy. I could barely make out the figure of a man tied to a chair with some sort of a metallic rope. 
A woman moving as if she was floating on air, not moving a single bone in her body, but yet being able to slowly hover around the room came into the picture. To my horror, she brought out a knife and started slowly cutting the man. If anybody knows what I'm doing, like, if anyone has, if anybody, uh, knows the reference that I'm making with this voice, I commend you so much. <laughs> and if you have any guesses, leave it in the comments. I'll tell you if you're right. <laughs> but, uh, just to make it a little more obvious, even. <clears throat> The man screamed in brutal pain as the woman slowly cut him to pieces. Blood poured from his mouth and all his lacerations as the woman dug the knife in deeper. His clothing was slowly stripped from his body and after each article was removed, she used a lighter to set all of the newly exposed hairs on fire. Covered in horrific burns and terrifying cuts, the man had stopped screaming and was now simply bawling. He occasionally screamed out, Why? For that was all he could muster. Each time he did, the woman stabbed him again. I don't think he'd be alive very much if she did that. She began laughing as the man began vomiting blood and entrails. Once again, hang on. Can you vomit up entrails? <laughs> you gotta fucking love Siri, okay? This motherfucker... <laughs> I love what I do so much. <laughs> Listen to this. I think I know what she thought I said, but going off of what we know I said, pushing your limits and puking. Why does it happen? Pushing your limits? What the fuck you? What does that mean? Alright, uh, let's try this again. Oh god. Can you vomit up your actual gut? Ah! This is way worse. While it sounds unpleasant and unusual, it is possible to vomit up your own fecal matter, known in medicinal literature as feculent vomiting. Throwing up poop. I am, I am ascended. I have, I have reached peak evolution. Mm. <laughs> Everything that I've ever known or or will know is uh has has led me to this moment of clarity in my life. I will never be the same again. I never want to be the same again. 
Dear God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> the bitch throwing up poop! <sighs> okay, um... That's, that's enough of that for tonight. Um, no more. No more Google. No more Google. No more Google. No more Google. No more Google! Okay. She picked up the small, solid pieces of the vomit with the knife and... Oh, no. She slowly licked the knife clean, giggling like a schoolgirl. Oh. She then proceeded to gouge the man's left eye out while he was still alive. No, he wouldn't be alive by now. I couldn't watch anymore, so I closed the video. Shaken and horrified, I clicked on 1.avi. I had to know what was going on. I almost don't even want to read these parts because these are very, very graphic depictions of child violence, and I actually am going to be very dead serious about this. This is not funny. This is not acceptable. This is extremely disgusting. This makes me ungodly uncomfortable to read. I don't even feel comfortable putting this up on YouTube, but I feel that it is necessary to point out why these kinds of things are extremely bad and why they are extremely detrimental to the growth and development of our youth. And to think that I heard these things at a age that is extremely young for somebody to be hearing this kind of brutal description of child violence, I might add. This is not adult violence. This is not some kind of horror movie where things are graphic like Saw or like Hereditary or, or any kind of other grindhouse horror movie that you can think of. House of a Thousand Corpses, whatever the fuck your cup of tea is, I don't give a shit. None of that is even comparable because they do not depict the brutal murdering of children. Please turn away or skip ahead to the end of the video if you do not want to hear these descriptions. They are very disturbing and the person that wrote this story needs help. If this is any indication of their mental state. It was a young boy, about eight years old, bound to a chair. He looked confused and innocent. Such a thing surely was not about to happen to this boy. The video was of the same quality as the last one, however the background was much brighter. They seemed to be in an abandoned household, falling apart and in ruin. The woman floated over to the boy, much like she did in the last video, and kissed him gently on the cheek. She slowly brought heat lamps, the, se the source of the brightness mentioned before, over to the boy one by one until the entire video was white. After a while, the camera was dimmed so the boy could be seen again. The innocent look once again, or the innocent look once seen in the beginning of the video turned into one of excruciating pain. The heat lamps slowly began burning his clothes and skin. Bubbles and blisters began rapidly forming on his skin as he too screamed in pain. As with the man in the last video, he screamed why and was punished each time by being brutally lashed with a belt studded with pieces of what appeared to be broken glass. The blisters began to boil as the child was roasted alive. Eventually, the screaming stopped and the boy fell into seizures. At this point, the same giggling in the last video could be heard again, this time even louder. She then took a knife and carved, I deserved this, into the child's melting torso as he screamed. Eventually, the boy stopped moving, and I closed out at that point.
There is so much wrong with our society if this is any indication of that. This video is accessible with no disclaimers, just like the last one, to children. Now, I get it. I get it. You can't stop this stuff from going on the internet. But you can at least try and be a little fucking responsible. Torture porn doesn't need to be on the internet. There's a lot of things that free speech protects. But you know what? The brutal torturing of children is not fucking one of them. Anybody who thinks that this is even remotely acceptable, kindly email me. We'll have a great talk together. I need to pause because this is getting to be, that was, I can't even think of anything cute or funny no not for that I need a minute so I've genuinely had to actually just stop everything for a day I have had too much that was too much for me I actually had to stop for a day so we're back here to finish this godforsaken thing. And um, let me just say before I do. What the fuck? Okay. Now that we've said that. Now that we're all caught up. And feeling terrible about our lives. Let's continue. I needed to see the next one. I had to witness this. Really? Why? This had to be stopped. That much we can agree on. With such a determination, I clicked on 2.avi. This time, there was no one strapped to the chair. Instead, an infant car seat was in the chair with what seemed to be a newborn, newborn infant tightly strapped inside. I'm going to elect to skip this part in lieu of forget monetization, but decency. It's bad enough that you just described this kind of torture to a, what was it again? Um, da, 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 da. Ah, eight, eight year old. You've already described the graphic torture of an eight-year-old. I don't really care to wager what you have in store for a newborn infant. I don't wager anybody wants to know what you have in store for that. If the last story we reviewed is any indication of how sick these people can become, I think I'd rather just not know. And while I already do know, and you probably already know if you're watching this video, if you haven't read the story, feel free to read it in the description if you don't want to hear me graphically describe it. Because I'm not going to graphically describe this next part, and if you are mad that I won't describe this part, maybe, just fucking maybe, you and the author of this story have a little too much in common, and you need a lot of help. 
And it's okay. I'm allowed to say that. I need a lot of help. But guess what? I find ways to actually circumvent that so that I don't have to actually get professional help that leads me down a path that will surely put me onto antidepressants or other medications which would just otherwise hinder and suppress what I should be dealing with like a human being. That's a story for another time. Let's keep going. We're skipping that section and more child violence. Um, what the fuck? I'm not going to uh, describe this, but um, I'll put it on the screen right here in this section uh, just so that you can read out what this says. I'll put it on the screen right now uh, as I'm reading this. Holy shit. Okay. Shaking, I forced myself to click on y.avi. Before the video played, I noticed that this file was modified within the last hour. How convenient. Almost blinded by fear, I swallowed my apprehension and opened my eyes. This time, there was just the woman. No other person was present. She was facing away from the camera and was speaking in a demonic tone. Why? I can't recall exactly... But here's a paraphrased transcript of what she said. Hello, clearly by now you know that I'm not the person you thought I was. I'm a sick and twisted woman. I love this. It makes me so happy to see somebody die, especially at my hand. I know you're watching this, and I know you're terrified. The ghosts of those I have killed are swarming around you right now, telling you to pull away from the screen to save yourself. Yet you still sit there and watch, waiting for some happy ending or reasonable explanation as to the events you've just witnessed. There are no special effects here. What you saw was real. I love watching this footage, even so much as to pleasure myself to it. Ah, but I had to hide it. You couldn't know. Your lonely piece of shit brain would tell you to turn me in. You were so desperate lo blah, 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 blah. Already for starting this fucking shit. Get the fuck ready for tonight. You were so desperate for love. You fell in love with a serial killer. The woman turned around instantly and I recognized the face of my wife. I couldn't even feel emotion at this point. I didn't know what to think. My memory had fallen to pieces. I didn't know where I was or who I had been or what I was about to go through. Everything in my life died as I saw the once happy and bubbly eyes that I once saw in my wife become vapid and emotionless. Why did you have to use saw twice right there? <clears throat> A smile crept across her face, one that makes me quiver in malaise. I'm not going to lie, I don't know how to pronounce that, and I don't really give a fuck because it's just a stupid attempt at somebody trying to be pretentious. You see, that's the difference between me and this dumbass. If I am actually dumb enough to the point that I don't know what a word means, uh, first of all, I'm not just going to go Google Translate the bitch and figure out what it means. Surely not. No, no, surely, surely not. That makes me quiver in malaise upon the slightest thought of it. Anyway, back to my point. Yeah, um, so, uh, if I don't know what a word means, then I'm not just gonna fucking... What was the point of this again? The fuck am I doing? Ah, oh, God, I just... Fuck. My brain just fried a little bit. This wasn't possession. This wasn't mental illness. This was just evil. So evil. The video continued. It's quite a shame. I really loved you. We had this passion. He, he, he. Anything that ever says he, he, he makes me want to kill somebody. Like, no hyperbole uh, just makes me want to kill somebody. He, he, he. Remember the giggle? I made you fall in love with me. I tricked you. I lied to you. And want to know the best part? I knew you would find out. I couldn't keep the secret forever. Eventually, you'd find the key to the basement. Eventually, the stench would become too strong. Eventually, the decaying foundation would begin to topple the house. <laughs> oh my god, this 
This is so fucking stupid. And eventually you'd finally realize that my children never had leukemia and that my husband never left. I killed them. And they're closer than you think. What do you think the basement smells so bad? You'd be surprised how easy it is to cement human remains into the floor. You stepped on my dead children and husband. Feel proud of yourself. I like how she's trying to actively shame the man now that um, she's just revealed the horrible things she did to her family and she's just like, oh, you feel proud of yourself? Like, it's some kind of, like, patriarchal, just like, I shouldn't be making fun of this. I really shouldn't, but God damn it, I've got to find something. I've got to find something of substance because I am just so brain dead at this moment in time that I would, I'm almost tempted to grab that sword in the corner over here and just commit sute. Uh, I don't even know. That 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 wasn't even the right kind. Of, I, 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 I. One moment. I am a fucking idiot, and um, and I will fully accept that. Um, sute is an Indian form of suicide. I needed to say sepoku. That is what I meant to say. Now that we've established that, and we all know exactly what I meant by what I was going to do, let's continue. Okay? Okay. Okay, someone just kill me. I... I know you're watching this. You just made this video. <laughs> I know what you've done! What is he... What, is, what has he done? I'd like to know, because I'm lost. I began shaking my head, fearing what I knew, what I was about to hear. A cold sweat crept upon me as I suddenly felt two eyes bore into the back of my head. I was paralyzed. Those noises you're hearing aren't the pipes. Turn around. I slowly turned and froze as I met the psychotic eyes of my wife, and she began to giggle. <laughs> I imagine that's what she did. She's like, ah! like, please, please, can that be what she did? Please, for the for for my sake as well as others, please. I don't know what happened after that. I've been told by police people heard screams coming from the house during my attempted murder and called the police. I was told by physicians that I was violated with the sharp end of a screwdriver and that she placed a block of hot ice on my lap. Oh. I was tied to a chair, the same one as was used in the previous videos and was videotaped. All the videos are now in police custody and I refuse to see mine. My wife was given the death penalty. I was present at the execution. Her last words were to tell me that she would never leave me. That she would always know where I was, and that she would never give up on my murder, and that she never left a job unfinished, that she was sure to tell me that I would see her again, that she'd send another minion. Excuse me? Um. Oh. 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 What the fuck? She'd send another minion to finish the job. Oh. Okay. We have officially leapt into the uncanny valley. That was the moment that did it, folks. Forget all the child torture. Forget everything else that happened in this shitty story. No, that... That was the jump the shark moment. That right there. That, that takes the cake. I can't really say that much else... Mmm. Another minion. Mmm. You know, I would say that, but you know, I, I've read if I've read ahead a few. Fuck me! I've read ahead a few sentences, and um, yeah, it gets worse. <clears throat> she finished by telling me that I would never be safe, ever. She survived. God damn it, one more time. 
How many times can a person survive lethal injection? Okay, so how many times does this say? Ah, yes. Here we are. She survived the first three attempts at lethal injection. Three. 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 But died on the fourth. So four. Um, gonna call bullshit on that one. I, I don't believe that's possible. She was smiling and she giggled like a schoolgirl right before she died. I'm sure she did, but I'm sure it probably sounded less like giggling and probably more like... <laughs> probably more like that, you know. Probably not much of a giggle. I've been through extensive therapy, and years later, I've been able to overcome the horrific trauma I saw and experienced. I still make six figures a year. I've made a good network of friends, and my life has been incredible. I feel accomplished and successful, something I never felt before. I am now confident, so confident in fact that I'm going on a date tonight with a girl. She's cute too. Long, dark float. <clears throat> Long, dark, flowing hair and vibrant green eyes. Can you see where this is going? Of course you can. Because it's just another goddamn example of this fucking shit. God, I hate this. Why do I keep doing this? Ugh, God, I can't wait until Wednesday when I can start reviewing better things than this fucking bullshit. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. We're not okay. Have a good night, everybody. Enjoy the story tonight. It's also about crazy people. How fucking crazy is that? Have a good one. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs>